watching Bits to Bytes. Uh, today the problem we're going to cover is called Class Photos and the problem reads uh, is photo day at a local school and you're the photographer assigned to take class photos. The class you'll be photographing has an even number of students and all of these students are wearing either red shirts or blue shirts. In fact exactly half of the class is wearing red shirts and the other half is wearing blue shirts. You're responsible for arranging the students in two rows before taking the photo. Each row should contain the same number of students and you should adhere to the following guidelines. All students wearing red shirts must be in the same row. All students wearing blue shirts must be in the same row. Uh, each student in the back row must be strictly taller than the student directly in front of them. Uh, and to represent students, you're given two input arrays, one containing the heights of all students with red shirts and another one containing the heights of all students with blue shirts. These arrays have the same length and each height will be a positive integer. Write a function that returns whether or not a class photo uh, that follows the stated guidelines can be taken. Um, so if we look down at our sample input, we can see that we, give, we, get, we get two arrays. Um, and each number in these array represents the height of a specific student. Um, now, the one thing that we don't know is, well, which, which, uh, which color shirt should be the back row and which color shirt should be the front row. Um, so one way um, I like to look at this, let's go over here, right? So let's say we have Red shirt, blue shirt, right? And values in red shirt are five, eight, one, three, and four. And the values in blue shirt are six, nine, two, four, and five, right? So we need to determine which row should be tested as the back row and which row should be tested as the front row, right? So when I'm dealing with an array problem, the first thing I like to do, like just on like a notepad or like a, a scratch pad is sort of play around with the array. Um, you can see here that the one, one follow-up question that I asked my interviewer is if we can manipulate the array, meaning can we adjust the array such that um, the order of the child the order of the children with red shirts or blue shirts, uh, can we change that? Meaning, can we change the order of the array? Right, so that's one thing I would, as a follow-up question, I'd ask my interviewer. Um, for this, I'm gonna assume yes. So if your interviewer says yes, then the first thing that I like to do is sort of, let's try and just sort the array and see if anything sticks out to us, right? Um, and let's write here, we're trying to determine front row versus back row, right? Which we're trying to determine which color shirt should be the front row and which color shirt should be the back row, right? So I like to just sort the array to see if anything sticks out while I'm brainstorming. So three, four, five, and eight. So this would be it in ascending order. And let's sort this one. Let's I think it's two, then four, then five, then six, then nine, right? So based on this sorted order, we can see that, I mean, the only possible way for this to work, because, because the, the, the shortest kid in the entire classroom has a height of one, um, we need to find someone that has a height of greater than one well that well looking at okay let me start that over so because the kid in the the only kid in the shortest kid in the classroom has a height of one we need to look in blue to see if we see any heights that are taller than one well that's easy right so one to one mapping right so two is always taller than one right so therefore we already know that blue shirts should be assumed to be the back row Right now, let's move on. So now we we so let's see this. So we assume 
blue shirt to be back row. And again, the reason that we're assuming the blue shirts should be the back row is because just looking at the first element, right, in, in the, the first students in this row, blue is taller, right? The blue row is taller than the red, the red, the red shirt row uh, to start out, right? So we assume that. Now let's, as we iterate through this blue row, well, four is taller than three, five is taller than four, six is taller than five, and nine is taller than eight, right? So, so how did we determine that, that the blue shirt should be the back row and the red shirt should be the front row? So I think the easiest way to sort of look at this is we compare the element at the start of our sorted arrays, right? Whichever is larger, we assume to be the back row, right? So basically we sort our array, right? Step we did right here. And then we just take the first element from each array, in this case one and two, and whichever one is larger, we assume that array to be the back row and the other one to be the front row. So in this case, blue would be the blue array would be considered the back row and the red array would be considered the front row. Right? Now let's see how we can how we can do that in code, right? Let's delete this. All right. So what did we say? The first thing we need to do is sort our array. So sort both lists, right? And then we do collections.sort and then so we're going to sort the red shirts and we're also going to sort the blue shirts right so let me just copy that here see put that there okay now we need to determine uh which color should be back row and which color should be should be front row right and again how we're going to do this we're pretty much now that we know our array is sorted we're going to say if the red shirt the first element in red shirt array right oops dot get zero right so we're gonna get the first element in red shirt array if that is greater than uh, blue the first element in blue shirt array get zero then we assume that the back row should be red shirts and because we're assuming that the back row should be red shirts, then blue shirts are front row, right? So because so so once we check the first element in our array in our sorted array and we see that okay red shirts the first element in red shirts is larger than the first element in the blue shirts uh, list then we assume that the red shirt should be the back row and the blue shirts should be the front row, right? Now, let's put a little helper method here that we're gonna sort of define a little later. Let's call it measure height helper. And we don't really know what it's gonna consume, but let's just leave it blank for now. This is gonna actually do the calculation um, to determine if the red shirt heights for all of the students are strictly taller than the blue shirt heights for the blue shirt students, right? So let's just leave that there for now. And then we're gonna say else if, and we're pretty much gonna do the opposite, right? So we're gonna say blue shirts or, or blue shirts list dot get zero is greater than red shirt heights dot get zero now this is going to be the oops this is going to be the opposite case right so we assume that back row should be 
blue shirts, then red shirts are front row, right? And this is the case in our example uh, to the side here. When we sorted the array, we saw that the red shirts first element was uh, a height of one, and the blue shirts first element was a height of two. So because the blue shirts was, was strictly greater, the first element in blue shirts was strictly greater than the first element in red shirts, we assume that the back row should be blue shirts and the front row should be red shirts. Right? And again, we're going to have a helper method to just run through the array to determine that that pattern holds true for the entirety of the list. All right, but we'll, we'll stop that out in a minute. Then we say else. And in our else case, we could just return false, right? Because let's say, for example, that it's not greater, it's not greater than, it's not less than. What if they are equal? Well, that violates one of our rules, right? That over here, it says that the back row must be strictly taller than the students directly in front of them, right? And we know if the values are equal, then no matter if you put blue shirts in front or blue shirts in back, red shirts in front, red shirts in back, they're always going to run into each other at some point and be equal to each other, which is not strictly taller, which is one of our, uh, our guidelines, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to return this return this. Now let's see if we can sort of stub out this uh, helper helper uh, method. Yeah. So this helper method is going to go like public, static, it's going to return a boolean, so either true false value, name of it is measure heights helper, parens, and let's try and think of um, what, oops, mess this up. There, 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 there we go. So now let's try and think of what parameters this helper function is going to consume. Well, for sure we know that it's going to consume uh, two array lists, either a back row and a front row, but the order of it is going to matter up here, right? And, and you'll see what I mean in a second, right? So we're going to have an array list of integer, and the first parameter, we're going to call that taller row, right? And we're going to have another array list, integer, and we're going to call it a shorter row. All right? So these are the two, per let me shrink this. These are the two uh, parameters that this helper function is going to consume, right? And basically what we're going to do is pretty simple, right? We're going to say for int i equals zero as long as i is less than taller row dot size i plus plus right and let's just make it a little explicit we could do this in a one-liner but just for clarity we're going to say int taller student right so this is the student that we assume to be taller right row dot get i oops. and then int shorter student equals shorter row dot oops get i okay now our if check is th this for loop is going to check for the false case right and and what this thing is going to say is is the taller student must always be strictly taller, right? And strictly taller means it must be greater than, right? Anything else should return false, right? So we're going to say if, the sh if for some reason the shorter student is greater or taller than the taller student that we assume to be, right? Then we return false, right? Because then we know that the the it cannot be true. We there is no possible way to fit these two rows into a class photo such that the back row is strictly taller than the front row, right? And outside of this for loop, let's just put a little space there. 
uh, outside of this for loop, if we make it through this entire taller row uh, array list, right, without hitting this condition, then we know that we can return true, right? Because our assumption of which one is the taller row and which one is the shorter row um, is true, right? Now, jumping back over here, the parameters that we're going to fill on lines 18 and 22, well, looking back at our helper method, the first parameter is the taller row, the second parameter is the shorter row, right? And over here, we assume that the back row should be red shirts, right? So we're going to put the red shirt array as the taller row, and then we're going to put the blue shirts array as the shorter row. And over here, we're going to do sort of the opposite. We're going to put the blue shirts heights as the taller row, and we're going to put the red shirts as the shorter row. And yeah, I think, uh, I think this makes sense should work. Let's run this code. 15 of 15 test cases passed, submit the code. And there you have it. Uh, yeah, so the trick to this was just understanding how to manipulate the given arrays. Um, again, anytime you get an array question, uh, comparative array question specifically, you really want to make sure that you can uh, sort of mm, reorder the array and, and write, write it down on a scratch piece of paper or on a whiteboard and see if sorting the array, ascending, descending, and comparing the two um, triggers some type of pattern that you could use to help solve the problem. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe.